Hey guys, how's it going? I'm that socially awkward gamer you probably forgot existed. The Wild Zone's Patty Jack, and welcome to Hope or Note for Star Wars Battlefront. This is the show where we go over an upcoming game and we talk about whether we think it's going to be successful or not based on what we know so far. The last episode was on Fallout 4, so as always, let's quickly go through a few comments from that video before we get started. The first comment was from RockRocks13, I hope I pronounced your name right. He says, I have hope, but on a small scale. I like the crafting and building your own settlement and base, but I doubt the story is going to be anything spectacular. However, the story isn't the prime reason I play these games. Character voice is also going to limit mods, especially quest-related ones. I pretty much agree with this. The character voice was a pretty big point in my video. Having a voice character really limits what you can do with mods, so what they're going to have to do is like not have the character talk but they're going to have to change how the cutscenes work or something. There's going to be a weird workaround for it, and it's going to get solved, but it is going to kind of hamper the modding community a little bit, and that's obviously such a big part of Bethesda games. The crafting looks great, and I doubt the story is going to be fantastic, because that's just not Bethesda's strong suit. It never has been. I think that New Vegas had a way better story than Fallout 3 did. It's just not what they do really well. The second comment comes from Dark Side of the Wall. He says, Hope. The improvements to gameplay, namely the extensive weapons crafting, settlement building, and armor customization, far outweigh my concerns about the new dialogue system. However, I can see the problems with having a voice main character. For example, any quest mod for Fallout 4 would lack any main character dialogue, which would be jarring after having played through the entire game with a voice character. That's pretty much what I just said in the last comment. I mean, everyone who commented on this one all said Hope because they all thought the game was going to be great. And I can't really blame them, because Bethesda games have always been buggy, glitchy, and not fantastic, but they are great, and people get extremely invested in them. Alright, now let's move on to Star Wars Battlefront. With the Battlefront beta recently finishing, I feel like I have a lot more to say in this video, which is why I waited so long to do it. I was very skeptical of this game from the start due to my decreasing faith in the Battlefield series. I outright despised Hardline, and it ended up being one of my more successful videos, if not just as controversial. Star Wars Battlefront is a first and third person shooter set as a reboot for the popular series prominent in the sixth console generation. I personally logged hundreds of hours in both Battlefront and Battlefront 2 as a kid, and definitely have high nostalgia for the title. Because of this nostalgia, I was initially worried about DICE making this reboot untrue to the originals and more like their Battlefield series. I'm glad to say I don't believe this is the case from what I've played though. There are a lot of opinions from both sides, but I never got the impression that I was playing a Battlefield game. It felt more like Battlefront with a few little twists here and there. The power-ups are a welcome addition that reward every player instead of the best ones, making for a more fair fight. The heroes are also more balanced between players, allowing anyone the opportunity to play as a Jedi, Sith, or other special character if they find the correct power-up. I was also a fan of the idea of Walker Assault as a game mode. At first, not being able to control the AT-ATs was something I disliked, but it makes sense considering they move so slowly, and in the original games, you were still simply moving forward much the same as you are in this one. Actually being inside the at is also limited to a one minute power up, which I'm in favor for now considering the broken map in Walker Assault. The map they introduced to us was heavily slanted towards the Empire. This was due mostly to the spawn points on the Rebel side being absolute tosh and causing players to effectively be bantha fodder for the Imperials. The map consistently allowed the Empire to flank behind the Rebels with ATSDs trapping the Rebels in a small hangar base of which they couldn't even see outside of, and in the final third of the game, the map was so open that Rebel players could be instantly picked off by the at, -AT when you were spawning. They need to introduce new ways on that map for the Rebels to spawn in a safe area and have the ability to defend uplinks properly in order to actually be able to assault the Walker. Attacking the Walker should also be the priority in that game and offer bonus points, as currently damaging it only offers you around 5 points compared to killing someone, which is... 100 plus. It's worth noting that the air combat with X-Wings, TIE Fighters, and the like isn't that great. It felt pretty clunky. I didn't get the chance to play it much, so those are really the end of my thoughts on that. Other than Walker Assault, there's also the Drop Pod game mode, which took place on Celeste. This was a standard domination style mode with small teams waging infantry warfare, power-ups were harder to come by, and they were only dropping from the captured pods. This made the mode feel very similar to most domination modes in other FPS titles. 
What I will say is that the gunplay was shining in this mode, and I actually enjoyed the way it works. Most FPS games rely on recoil as an essential part of the game to give them a slight bit of edge to the gameplay. Obviously, blasters and laser rifles aren't going to recoil, so instead DICE implemented a shot cone system. You can fire as long as you want, and the cone of fire will stay in the same reticle. You just have no way to like increase your accuracy. Thus, zooming in will only affect the range you can see targets. Is that a better system? I think I'll need to play the full game to say for sure, but it's slightly different and I welcome that. I like it when people actually try something different. The jetpack also brings a new level of tactical gameplay, so <laughs> after unlocking it I really enjoyed flying around behind an enemy or dropping grenades on them as I passed over. It just feels so great to use as an escape mechanic or a quick maneuverability across the map, and it's not spammable due to the cooldown mechanic, which I, I love. I love the jetpack, it's fantastic. The graphics and sound design are A-plus in this game. This is really the best sound design I've heard since Bad Company 2. It captures the Star Wars feel so well, and that really adds enjoyment to the game. You really feel like you're in the Star Wars universe. The graphics help that as well, the designs are spot on, the effects look great, and it runs fantastic on PC. I especially love the snow glitter on Hoth, it was such a great effect, and the little things like that really do help. I was also consistently getting at least 60 frames running a GTX 670, which is pretty great. Though there would be frame drops in an area or two, as well as when recording, but that's to be expected. Overall, I was more impressed than I thought I would be. I was extremely skeptical of this game from the start. It was pretty scary, especially when DICE kept releasing trailers that never actually showed gameplay. And after Battlefield 4's issues, I had the right to be skeptical. I'm more concerned now that the game modes available won't be enough to convince people to keep playing, though. It sounds like the standard affair of control points, conquest, capture the flag, and rush. However, I feel the game is competent enough to at least be enjoyable for a while, and while it might lack the planet variety and class system of previous games, it still has as much content and is better produced. People have a set of rose-tinted glasses when it comes to the Battlefront series. I love it. It's one of my favorite series of all time because I had so much fun playing it as a kid with my friends. Technically, however, the games weren't actually all that great. The vehicles were pretty clunky, the shooting was bullet spongy, space battles were extremely simple when you got down to it, and the game modes were pretty samey. This new iteration is a much more polished product, albeit somewhat incomplete feeling. Although they will be including all the multiplayer maps available as single player or co-op with bots, so instant action is technically still there. What's my verdict on Star Wars Battlefront? After all the good things I said, after everything that I said was great and I enjoyed, I'm sorry to say it's getting a nope. This is a series that can't afford to be different and risk backlash from the fans. I enjoy most of the differences personally, but I also feel like they stripped away too many features from the original. I like the drop pod in Walker Assault mode, but did we really need it? Whenever I was playing it, I kept feeling like I would rather be playing the cancelled Battlefront 3 instead to feel the same love for the series that Pandemic originally had. Really, Battlefront is a competent video game with fantastic sound design and it's a great looker, but it's not the heart and soul of the series. People are gonna notice that. That's all I got for you today, so let me know in the comments section if you agree or disagree with me. If I missed anything, let me know. If I screwed anything up, please let me know. Just remember to be respectful, and don't yell at me or anyone else there like a 4th grader. I am Patty Jack, and if you comment, you will have the chance to be featured in the next episode. I will see you guys next time.